record. We're doing it. Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome everybody. Welcome to it. Um, we, <laughs> we are recording one day after our conversation with our, with our buddy and uh, friend of the show, Sam Fortier, Washington Post uh, beat writer for the, um, the NFL Washington team. There we I, go. I, I butchered that go. now. I still didn't even get it right. No, nah, you got it. Washington NFL team. Um, yeah, great conversation with him about kind of the state of state of the thing, state of affairs in in that organization right now, and um, how how dysfunctional it is. He uh, he contributed to the to the big report that came out a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, great conversation. No, it was good. Um, I thought when you told uh, told me after we got off with him yesterday how once he joined the Zoom, we kind of just we knew by how he came on. He said, "What's up, dudes?" Um, we knew we were gonna have a good conversation, and it really was good. That's why we encourage everybody to listen because you know you're gonna hear some things that you possibly didn't know from a first hand reporter. And he was awesome. He answered all of our questions, even though he's probably been been answering those damn questions all week long, and he gave us what 30 minutes of yeah, content 25 absolutely. minutes yeah no he was great yeah probably um, probably after his work day was done at 5 15 and he he came on and you know we could tell he was pretty exhausted from that exhausted. day because the the report came out the day beforehand and um so yeah big thank you big thank you to sam fortier hopefully you're you're listening to this right now um but yeah Ian, the redskins man Washington football team. Oh. No, we were we were on the on the whole name basis. I think we were pretty good during the episode. I think you said it once and I, I said it once. I, yeah, I slipped up. So, but no, that's pretty good for us who use that kind of every day, just because we forget about it. We were pretty good. No, but all thanks to Sam. Hopefully, we can muster out a few more Washington Post reporters in the future. Maybe a Caps guy. We gotta yeah, try to get a Caps guy, something like that. And his Nats stuff was awesome, like the stories about the Nats winning. The, oh, absolutely, yeah. Talking about the World Series. Mm-hmm. Very lit, very lit. Um, anyways, Sam, thank you. But in bigger news, my Memorial Tournament, my golf knowledge. No, I'm joking, not in bigger news. My golf knowledge is almost getting up to par with Kyle. Oh, golf pun there too. Hey. <laughs> um, Jack Nicholas's tournament this weekend. What are your takeaways, K-Money? Um, yeah, Tigers, Tigers first, uh, first tournament back, not looking too great. He said he had some back discomfort yesterday, which isn't, which is pretty scary to hear. Um, but you know, made the cut just barely, uh, which, which is all right. But, um, you know, hopefully he, he can rest up, heal up totally. Um, to be honest, I think he's just looking looking at the, he's got the the Masters circled on his calendar because I think that's one tournament he knows he's won at a ton of times and he can win at, and that's that's the one tournament he's he's trying to win fully, so the, fully win. I mean, do you expect? I don't know. I don't know where the PGA is this year, but do you expect? Can you see? Is he going to make a run at the PGA or is he's He's never been historic. He hasn't been as good as the, at the PGA as he has the Masters. Um, I'm go, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Um, you know, I'm I'm a bit, as big of a Tiger fan as anybody else, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say um, he he misses the cut at the PGA. Really? Yes. Okay. That makes. I mean, because he's not. You know, he's not playing balls to the wall now. It it's really not a. It's not some huge bold prediction. But um, what's the. <laughs> How the hell are Justin Thomas and Morikawa shooting 20 under, shooting 18 under last week on this course? And then this week, what? what's Thomas at right now? Three under? Or Yeah. That, no, he's but, even. He's even. He's even? Yeah. Jeez. Is it the wind? I mean, I suck at golf. Yeah, but is the wind that much of a ha- – these no, guys they, were on they, a playoff yeah, last no, – Yeah, the uh, – the... The, the grounds crew or and whoever sets up that course did a did a pretty great job i'd say at, at totally switching up the conditions the the greens are rolling harder um yeah can't can't stick as many approach shots onto the greens th- this week um i think they grew the rough out at least 
um, half an inch this week. Um, so that's that's it's playing much harder this week. But I mean, like, still, John Rahm is, is 12, 12 under right now. Boo, Boo John Rahm. Boo, John um, Rahm. But yeah, someone who who definitely is probably interested in all that science and how to change the same course completely from one week to another. Bryson DeChambeau. He, you know, he's got another he's gotta boo. Love a big boo. Um, yeah, how you how you feeling about him, Ian? Well, you told me before after. Do you want to put it on a, on a limb here? On the NBC Golf app, I put him at minus 23, excuse me, 23 under for the Rocket Mortgage, Mortgage Classic, and I got that right, even though I only got, like, three of the matchups correctly. So just want to put that out there. Knowledge growing. I thought after that he was awesome. You know, when he's winning and when he's upstrokes, he's super fun to watch. The um, It's not a fedora. What is it? Uh, Beret, Beret or Beret, something. Beret. Derby cap. I don't yeah. know. He's awesome when he's winning and when he's hitting good shots and he's crushing the ball and he's laying up for a birdie every hole. He was super fun to watch two weeks ago. But he's talking to a – he's talking to a – what is it? Marshall about how he can hit – if he can hit the ball under a fence. He's kind of an ass. I mean, he, he's kind of a jerk. And what, you're saying that people on tour probably don't like him? He's kind of a yeah. – he's the, he's the new hated one. And he's he's slowly – very slowly like you know no one is Patrick Reed level right now <laughs> but he is he, I mean he's turning into a bit of a villain because you know a lot of people are, are kind of flip-flopping on him because he's the big weird, weirdo science guy right. with, with all the angles and, and the science behind behind golf and I mean I, I kind of isn't I'm I'm, I'm kind of not a big fan of that anyway I'm like just just play golf dude um, but you know he gains 40 pounds in less than a year or something in muscle and and he's just an absolute freak and and um i mean he is fun to watch just dude hitting 360 yard bombs off the tee consistently he's fun to watch um but but he's he he is a, he he's a bit of an ass <laughs> and uh, he's last week he he yelled at a cameraman Yes, yes. For 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 literally videoing him for a minute and like that's not me twisting words. He went on into into his press conference afterwards and said he's like, "Yeah, this cameraman literally followed me a minute after my shot and like that's his job. He's a cameraman. Stop complaining about it." And this week, he he like two day yesterday, I think, he went off on on a marshal. He hit his he hooked his ball under like a a gate and the marshal ruled it out of bounds and he said are you are kidding me like i don't believe it. i want <laughs> give me, give I, me a second, I need a second opinion like to quit he's like and he's he's all about building his brand too and i mean the only the only thing he he wants is his positive attention but you know he's 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 kind of <laughs> just a jerk but okay he's a jerk is is this could this in any way be good for golf? You know, because his, like, outlandish, lavish, yeah. I don't know if I'm using it right, personality, it's different. It's super different than, like, Ricky wearing orange on a, on a Sunday and being, like, eccentric. Ricky's just eccentric because he's fun. This is, like, I mean, yeah, just a jerk. Is that, could that be good for the game? It's, like, yeah. good for pub, any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. yeah, golf right now has some characters, more characters than I've, I've seen in the past decade. You have Patrick Reed, the, the identified villain. You have um, some sort of combination between big jock dude and, and, and weirdo science guy with DeChambeau. You have Baba? You have, you, you, yeah, you have bizarre Bubba who's hitting wiffle balls out there. You have Tiger Woods, the seasoned veteran who's the greatest player of all time. Um, Rory McIlroy, JT, Jordan Spieth, so many different characters right no, now. So yeah. the, the more quirks you have on tour, the more people are going to follow it. Like that's all people can talk about right now is Bryson DeChambeau who gained 40 pounds <laughs> and he's hitting it 400 yards off the tee like that's that's, that's ridiculous of course people it's are going to want to watch that um and and with the addition of him being like a jerk to, to people right it's now even better it's even yeah, better they, not for people we, he's being a jerk to but it's it's good for golf i think absolutely still still better than john Rom though still better um 
last little last golf um, topic before country song of the week, best part. Um, you said when I picked Tony Finau, I believe three weeks ago, maybe at, at the Heritage, you said, don't pick Tony Finau. I went against your word. I'm sorry, my friend, because Tony Finau never wins. Tony Finau's second placer. Bad day today. Very bad day. I think he's four shots behind Rom. It's Tony Finau, Ricky Fowler 2.0, can never win, won't ever win. Personally, he's so young that I think he will win. Or is he, or is he just a choker? I mean, I, I don't even know if he, you know, I think he's got like one or, or two wins on tour, but like he'll never win a major, just like Ricky's never going to win a major. Like, I wouldn't say either is 2.0 of each other. They're the same person. They, <laughs> just they, winless. Really, they go up on, on day one, day two, and then they just fizzle out. They just, they, they end up T, T30, they're tied for 30th. And it's, I mean, neither of them can can finish a, a tournament. Because we're saying this now, I was going to go shoot yeah. five under tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah. It, that's sad because unlike Bryson and like unlike Bubba, when like the camera's on Ricky and on Fina, it generally seems like people like being around yeah, them. You know? they're great and guys. They're, their game is awesome and it's fun to watch and it, it's not boring like I'm watching – Jason Duffner or whatever. Who, I <laughs> love Duffner. You should um, love that. But, like, Finau, I like rooting for him week in and week out. Like, I like rooting for Wiki, Ricky week in and week out. Wiki Fowler. <laughs> Wiki. We're going to we're gonna have to edit that out. But, wow, really, no, no, no major predictions for you. I think, you know, I think Finau will get one. I hope so. I'm, I'm, I'll be rooting for him. Um. Do we have any other sports to talk about before we get to the country song of the week? Because <laughs> I feel like people deserve more than just golf. I, you know, I, if, 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 if we could, I would talk about golf all freaking day, but people, I don't think want to hear that. So, I mean, do we want, is there any like, Oh, NBA bubble. Yeah, right. We we talked about the NBA bubble. That'll go on the Instagram. Derek Henry four year extension or something okay get, i'll talk like, about that he's the greatest running back of all time <laughs> get just okay getting like 25 million guaranteed honestly he doesn't look like a huge contract um i think it's gonna he's gonna be like a third or fourth biggest paid running back in the league which honestly is kind of preposterous he should get paid like the best running back in the yep. league because k money k money is he the best running back in the league yeah yep i don't care people might say like oh he's had one good year no i mean He's had a no, he's couple, a monster. He's, he's a had a monster. couple good years, and I mean, coming out of college, he, he he was he was still a monster, and I I knew he was gonna be this good coming out. I'm I'm gonna say it. I called it. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. He got like, tra- like Brendan called Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Um, but he he came out of college, got drafted by the Titans, and was stuck behind like Chris Johnson for for a good oh like f- for like four years, and and just didn't. I don't, I don't think he saw much. Um, you know, I'm I'm not watching the Titans too too much, but you know, he he definitely wasn't the starting running back for for a good period of time. So he got that pedigree from uh, Chris Johnson, I think. Um, but he's like he's a he's a tank. Like I I don't know how you're gonna stop this guy. Like th- every year he keeps getting better and better. And like he's 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 a mobile Gronk at the running back position. <laughs> no, you're right. This is a this is a Derrick Henry love podcast. Absolutely, we'll change our profile picture to Derrick Henry. This isn't. I hate the Cowboys. You you hate the Cowboys. We hate the Cowboys. And. But we both like Zeke's game. He's really good. Zeke's phenomenal, but he's not as good as Derrick Henry. Because just look at the playoffs. Look how far Henry got them. He just took down two defenses yeah. just because he's because he's huge. Zeke doesn't do that. Zeke, if you trade Zeke and Derrick Henry, the Titans don't beat the don't beat the Patriots in the first round in Foxborough. No. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, I mean Henry's be- best running back in the league. I mean it's it's up there with Barkley um, nice and, and Zeke. Um, there, you know, you can talk about how good a running back is. Who's who's the best? Um, and and I'm sure I, I forget if I said, actually I remember I do I did say that um, Derrick Henry is the best, um, but 
that might be up, up for debate whether you know it's Zeke or, or Saquon or or uh, Derrick Henry who the best running back is but I'll, I'll, I'll revise that and say Derrick Henry Adrian is, is, is <laughs> I'll, I'll say um, Derrick Henry is the most unstoppable running back right now dominant yeah no yeah no you're right not up for debate we agree on this one we agree yep um we getting to it no 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 Q country music country music uh, country music song of the week it's late it you start late. you start us off man all right i feel bad i feel basic again because this is two out of four appearances for sam hunt Leave the night on, leave the night on. Country song of the week. <laughs> yes, <gasps> that, that song's good. It's got like country, it's got pop. It's kind of got both. It's different than Kinfolks. It's different than Kinfolks because it's got a little, um, it's got a little like love song in it. I like that song. Sam Hunt, very underrated right now. We got a big Sam week. Sam Hunt, Sam Fortier, Sam please, Gelati. Please stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I mean, when did that song come out? Two thousand seventeen. Fifteen. I don't know. <laughs> you look that up while I make that make my pick. I'm I'm a bit <laughs> appalled by that because, I mean, <laughs> as far as I'm as far as I know, I haven't picked any any old songs as country song of of the current week. Um, <laughs> 2014. Jesus. Oh my gosh, Ian. <laughs> it's slaps. And I mean, it's slaps. and like we've talked about Sam Hunt. Like he's 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 um he's borderline. He's right there on the borderline of of country and pop or of, yes. of good yes. and not good at all. I I've I've said I enjoy listening to his music, but I'm hesitant to call some of his stuff country music. Okay. It's the, I, day. It's the last time I'm having the Sam Hunt on, I promise. That's that's probably a good move. Kinfolk. Was that your first pick? <laughs> that was the first pick. My first goodness. Week. Jeez. I pick Mix 'em with Whiskey by uh, Drake Young. Drake Young was a little bit unknown. Um, you might know him from his song "Making Me Look Good Again." Uh, I, yeah, I know he know opened. I know he opened up for the Zac Brown Band a, a little bit, um, but he's he's got a new album out, rather new. I don't I don't think it's it's super new, um, but good song out of that new album. Mix them with whiskey. I listened to the new Dixie Chicks, or formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, the Chicks album. That came out yesterday or two days ago or something. Can we, can we not say Dixie? They they changed their names to the to the Chicks. Hmm. Well, uh, why, Washington football team and the Chicks and the Chicks. <laughs> yep. And um, I was very disappointed with with their album. The and, best new album though, and I plan on using one of this, these songs for next week. Morgan Wallen. That's a good new. That's album. also basic right now. He's the new basic guy. Morgan Wallen. Everyone's it's, on it's the not, Morgan Wallen train. Everyone's it's not on, basic because he's good. Or is it? So uh, what? Basic. Basic no. just isn't like. Because you know, so, sorry, Morgan Wallen. Sorry that he's absolutely cranking it right now. He is, and and I mean, like, but like, I don't know, man. Because like, right? I'm thinking. I'm all I'm thinking right now is all those people who who like listen <laughs> to country who, yeah who listen to country music in the month of June and that's it and they're like oh my gosh Morgan Wallen is so good and <laughs> like that's I mean because th- because right now that that's it and it's like oh Morgan Wallen just posting pictures on their Instagram story like oh marry me and <laughs> Mor- Morgan Wallen Morgan Wallen's mullet I'll tell you I think it's uh, next June, July, Saturday weekend at Jiffy Lube, Morgan Wallen, Luke Bryan at Jiffy Lube. That would be awesome. That's going to be better than, it's going to be better than uh, Thomas Rhett. Yeah. I, and I, I got to admit, I, I'm probably a bit hypercritical of, of you. Um, Morgan Wallen is a great artist. Um, it, it just, it, you know, at times when everyone gets on, on a big bandwagon, <laughs> Um, like I, I pride myself in my knowledge of country music and, and once people just start hopping on and are like, oh yeah, Morgan Wallen, greatest country <laughs> music 
singer of all time. It, that's a little. That's, it it kind of it kind of throws me off a little bit of the Morgan Wallet train, but I do like him. Too much country music. Too, too much golf. This too much episode. Golf. Yes. we're sorry. I, I'm sorry, guys. Stick hope, with us. Yeah, <laughs> Derrick Henry's still the best running back in the league, though. Um, Facts. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this conversation with Sam Fortier as much as we did. Um, great guy. Go ahead and check, ch- check him out on, on the, in the Washington Post. He's got a bunch of stuff up online. Ooh, online. Um, yeah. See you, fellas, next week. Hopefully, we got some big Ooh, guests yeah. in the work a we, little we bit. Some, we got something stirring up in the kitchen. Stirring a little in the pepper, park. a little salt, flip it up. You know what I'm saying? That's next week. Okay. Stick with us. Stick with us. Good right. grief. Good grief. All right. Ian, go ahead. All right, friends. Of all ages, anybody who's listening, East Coast, West Coast, Central Time, our big audience, we have a huge guest this week. We've been reaching out to him, but he's been a busy man. He might be running on three hours of sleep. We don't know yet. We've got Washington Post writer. His beat is the Redskins, former Syracuse alum, former athletic writer for the Chargers. Everybody give it up for Sam Fortier. Thank you for being here today, Sam. Thank you guys for having me. This is That was definitely like the most WWE-esque <laughs> intro that I've gotten so far. <laughs> what, what would be your WWE intro song? Uh, oh, man. That's a good question. Uh, probably Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. <laughs> like, when I, was, when I was 18, I covered a, a, a kid got drafted. At, at Syrac- or a Syracuse kid got drafted, and I was at his draft party. And uh, when, like, when he got drafted, his whole family went nuts, and, like, they played that song. And ever since, I've been like, that song is that's the best. It. That's yeah. it my walk-up song yeah uh-huh. <laughs> not too many at bats with that one um <laughs> yeah so we were just talking b- before before we came on here uh how are you feeling how's that how's everything going <laughs> yeah it's it's been a busy time man it's like you know i was so uh, i'm new i'm covering the washington nfl team for the first time this year like i've been around it but this was my first year on the beat and uh I mean, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yeah, so, so in, uh, so after like mini camp and all that stuff happened, I was talking to my editor. I was like, Hey, like, you know, what, what's the deal with like the next month before training camp? He's like, nothing happens between late June and late July, like take some vacation, like just relax. And I was like, Oh, cool. Uh, so I went up to Maine where my family's from. And like, I went hiking with my dad on the Appalachian trail and, uh, and like, before I went on the Appalachian Trail, I called the PR guy at, at the team. And I was like, hey, like, I'm about to be without my phone for 36 hours. Like, is anything going to happen? Anything I should know about? He's like, no, dude, you're totally cool. Like, don't worry about it. And I was like, oh, great. And, uh, you know, I go hike. Like, I go, I'm on a backpacking trip with my dad. And uh, we stay overnight. And, like, at one point during the trip, like, we're walking. He's like, because you're gone, they're going to change the name. And I was like, don't say that. Like, <laughs> dude, like don't put that evil on me. And, uh we got back to the truck and like, I pull out my phone and I just, it's just blowing up. And it's like, Oh, like the team is changing their name because like 15 minutes after we left to go hiking on the trail, like FedEx and Nike came out and they were like, you got to change your name. And, uh, since I got in, like, since I picked up my phone to right now, it's been like an all out mad dash. Yeah. I, we believe it. And it's, it's pretty impressive timing too, because we, we've had you kind of locked in here for like two weeks, something now, and then <laughs> the report comes out yesterday and everything. And, and we got you on today. So I think we were wondering um, today, like, so you, you contributed to that report. Um, we kind of wanted to know what your, what your role in that was and, and how everything went down there. Yeah, I played a very, very small role. I think this was mostly carried by Will Hobson and Liz Clark, Hobson. the yeah. two yeah. great Clark. reporters on this story. So, right. I mean, you know, a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. Uh, that's that's really um, all all I did. Um, and, and you know, everybody else at the bottom of the story contributing. You know, it's 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 just a big team effort, and and for Will and Liz to to come through like they did, obviously, feel super lucky to be a part of a team like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, yeah, it was a great report. Yeah. No, it was. Thank you. It was nice just because I think for the first time, readers and fans, since we were three years old, like Kyle and I felt like we were involved, you know, we felt like we were going on. And all those, you know, 
we found all this just crazy news out in one night when the report came out. I don't know. It felt like for years I knew something was up and this isn't surprising because this team has been just a question mark all over the league from playing to front office. And it was just nice reading the report. I mean, not nice with everything in it, but seeing what was actually happening was mind blowing. But with that being said, what's like the state of the team right now? Where do fans, does just the DC area have to, to look forward into the future? Where do they stand right now within the, the front office, within the players and within the coaches? I think the, the football side of the organization is, you know, still transitioning under that Ron Rivera plan of, hey, we're going to make free agent signings that make sense for us. Uh, we're going to build this team incrementally. We're going to try to be competitive in year one. Hopefully we'll, we'll build and kind of be a team to be reckoned with in, in year two or three. I think um, in terms of, of where the organization stands on the business side, I think there's still a lot of work to be done there. I think when Ron Rivera came in, um, I don't think he realized how big this job was going to be. Um, and I think he first found out the size of the job uh, during, during the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd and, and Black Lives Matter and the racial injustice protests. I think he realized that because the organization, when they were saying, hey, what's our response? What should we do? Everyone was looking to him because there is no team president like Bruce Allen. There's no business leader like La Famina. There's no, you know, Dan Snyder's absentee, you know, on his yacht in Europe. And, and Ron Rivera, when he came in, he knew he was going to have a lot of power, right? Like he knew he was going to have the final say on personnel. He knew okay. he was going to coach the team. But to know that, that there is a vacuum of leadership on the business side and, you know, five vice presidents are squabbling about, you know, hey, what do we do? What's, what's this look like? For him to realize that he had to take over both halves of this team, uh, I, I think that is still a big question mark. And, and we've reported that Dan Snyder has been pretty hesitant to hire someone on the business side after La Famina because that was supposed to go really well. And then it lasted, what, like nine months or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think there's a lot of work to be done on the business side and on the culture of, of not just the team, but also the organization and, and the business side. Yeah, because looking from the outside – to the average fan you look at the Redskins in the past decade or so and you see like a, a below average football team but it's so much more than that it's just a absolutely dysfunctional mess of, a, of an organization inside um, so especially with this report coming out what what do you think the future look, looks like for Dan Snyder uh, I think a lot of people want to say this is like the smoking gun or this is the thing that they you know that finally forced him to sell the team right like i think um i think it's it a little bit like you know the president in that sort of way like people are always looking or, or you know people who don't like him are always looking for the thing that's going to like get him or that was going to impeach him i think it's sort of a similar vibe and, and it's it's difficult for me because i think like obviously there was a lot uh, uh i think the way that local media mishandled this in terms of hyping up the report um that's a whole separate discussion i was pretty appalled by some of that but i think the the danger of that is like once someone starts tweeting like that like oh it's, it's gonna be bad it's gonna be bad yeah. uh people like hype it up to be like oh this is this is a means to an end like dan snyder is going to sell the team finally oh my god like yeah, yeah, when it, worst when case it, scenario right right they're gonna take it to the nth degree of course and so when it's not that like people get disappointed. And like, to me, when I read someone's response to 15 women coming forward and saying there was a culture of sexual harassment and verbal abuse, and they're like, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's real tangible damage um, that, that was done by, by hyping it up and making people think this was going to be like the, the cure for whatever worry they had about this organization. And so uh, I, I think like that, that is, that's a problem. Um, but I think Dan Snyder is not going to be forced to sell a team off this, in, in my opinion. I don't think, like, like if you think about it, um, sexual harassment accusations, um, like Carolina Panthers a couple of years ago with Jerry Richardson, right? Like Jerry Richardson, they, they could have forced him to sell the team if he didn't, like, throw up the team for sale and try to get out of Dodge as soon as he could. Um, but, but Jerry Richardson was like directly tied to that, you know, like he was the person like doing the sexually harassing. Dan Snyder is not like linked to this in the same way. So I think as of right now, there's no reason to suspect that that would happen. But at the same time, like, you know, it was two weeks ago today that 
uh, the the team announced they were going to review the name and like look how quickly that situation has progressed. So as of right now, no reason to suspect Dan Snyder selling, but who knows? Yeah. So no reason to suspect Snyder selling. What about if we kind of switch gears to like an NFL um, point of view with like sanctions? Could we see, because I was thinking, you know, what could the NFL do? Would it be a postseason ban or a loss of draft picks? But even that, you know, you take away, you take away three picks next year. It's just, it's not enough. It, <laughs> it, it, mean, seems, it seems like taking away picks is a slap on the wrist for an offense like this. Yeah, like se- <laughs> taking away draft picks for sexual harassment is kind of like that's that doesn't work. Yeah, I think neither of those things seem very likely to me. I think it would more target, you know, Dan Snyder. Um, you know, I think the thing right now that we just reported, uh, the likeliest scenario is a big fine. Okay. I could definitely see them, you know, maybe um, – restricting his involvement with league activities or or maybe it's you know he gets a smaller cut of the revenue from the tv deals but i think most likely this is going to be a financial um a financial implication for him and, and not anything on the field or that affects the team yeah and um yeah i did want to go back to the point you were talking about a couple minutes ago about everyone hyping up the the story i know i was looking on twitter and and i don't know how many washington post uh writers i saw talk about it it's it looked like it was a lot of people from the outside of 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 the post community um talking about how big of a story this was going to be and um I mean, yeah, you, you heard names like Epstein thrown in there. You heard, you heard Dan Snyder, alcohol, drug abuse, sex trafficking. And like, it's just a pity that everyone thinks worst case scenario, worst case scenario, this is going to be absolutely mind blowing. And then something awful comes out and people think like, oh, that's it. Like, that's the big news. And it's, it's just, it's, I mean, it's a little demeaning and it's, it's not the reaction people wanted for, for this type of story here. When Capri Bibbs got brought up, I was like, whoa, (laughs) like, what what was that? What was that? (laughs) Uh, There was like a a rumor that like Capri Bibbs and and Jay Gruden were seeing the same woman. So Jay Gruden benched Capri Bibbs. And like, that's why, you know, like the Alex Smith leg injury happened. Like, dude, like a bunch of my friends were, were texting me all the rumors, like keeping me up to date. Cause like, I didn't, I didn't see all these, like, I'm not super on Reddit or whatever. But like, when I saw that one, I was like, like Epstein, I was like, okay, that's the logical endpoint of like, I want this person to have done like the worst possible thing. Yeah. I was like, okay, I, I get that. But like when, when Capri Bibbs came up in like this, like incredible conspiracy theory that links like Alex Smith's leg and like all this other stuff, <laughs> I was like, I was like, people, people are really losing it. And like, uh, it's, it's obviously it's, it's difficult, right? Like I'm conflicted bringing up like the, the hype of the, of the story. Right. Cause like, it feels like we should just be talking about the story. Like, okay. Uh, there was a culture of sexual harassment that was permitted at this organization. What are the steps to make sure this never happens again? Because really like this should have been addressed with the cheerleader scandal. Like they should have stamped it out right then and been like, Hey, as an organization, we need to reevaluate how we treat women. What do we do? Um, and I think, like the fact that we're even talking about this is, is, is it's just tough. Cause like, this is not the thing you want to be talking about. Like, we got to exactly. focus on the real story here. Um, but it's just, you know, the hype behind it was pretty unbelievable. Like, you know, I had kids I, I haven't talked to since high school, like call me and be like, Hey man, we haven't talked in a while. Like, how are you doing? It's like, I'm not going to tell you what's in this story. Like, get out of here. You know, <laughs> like people text me. I haven't talked to you since like freshman, sophomore year of college that I had like orientation with. It's like, no, <laughs> they just wanted uh they wanted in before the public well yeah, they did they, all, they, they wanted the sam bomb <laughs> i'll do one more comment about the washington football team then kyle and i can talk about the real pride of dc the nats after and your time <laughs> with them after um but if we were to tell you or if you were in the press conference last year or to react to bruce allen saying you know what the culture is pretty damn good or damn good do you just have like quick thoughts about that or thoughts just from the reporting side and covering this team? As soon as he says that something's got to be off, right? Or are people believing him that, yeah, maybe with Ron Rivera and everything new, we can turn this thing around. 
Well, I mean, like, my first reaction when he says, like, the culture's damn good is, like, to laugh, right? Because yeah. it, it yeah. shows that he's out of touch. I mean, obviously, the culture's damn good. He said that last October. This was way before Ron Rivera. Like, this was, yeah. I believe, at the, the firing of Jay Gruden press conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, right. that's right. Yeah. Like, I mean, that tells you all you need to know. Like, this guy's been there for 10 years, and, and he looked at the organization at that point and was like, the culture's damn good. Like, dude, <laughs> I mean, Yikes. like, look around. <laughs> Uh, and, and obviously, like, you know, there's a reason that, that he and the team parted ways or whatever phrase they use to talk about, like, him being canned. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, my reaction to that is just, like, that's hilarious. Like, he obviously had no feel. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Uh, that man. Um, but, yeah, Ian said last point, but one more point about the Redskins here or the Washington, the Washington football team and uh, good, about, about this right now, actually. So the name change, um, <laughs> I mean, we, we got to start getting this, this process moving along pretty soon. Uh, do you know any information on, you know, what the, what the new name might be or what the front runners are for, for these names or. We're not like your high school friends. We don't mean. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> the school to have you on just for that, but. <laughs> no, we're cool. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like the, the thing is, is, is like, I don't think, I don't think anybody knows or, or very few people know, like Dan Snyder's keeping this thing in a really small circle for a reason. Uh, we know he's working the phones, you know, kind of throwing out testers to see like, Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? But I mean, the people who actually know the name, um, if it's been decided yet, which some people say it has, but I'm not sure that, that that's verified. Um, the, the fact, you know, if, if someone knows, uh, you know, I, I don't think they're telling, but I mean, it's really tough to say like what's even likely right like the fan yeah. base loves red wolves but like we don't know i couldn't give you like a, a good estimate on like if there's a 50 percent chance it's gonna happen right, or yeah. whatever like yeah, what uh you know it, it's really tough to say at this point i mean personally like i think red wolves is cool red tails is cool i get the criticism of red tails i think warriors is like the worst option yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> uh, but those are just my thoughts you know yeah i i i saw it out of all the, the Twitter names that have surfaced and all of the logos that have come up. Um, yeah. Like red wolves is pretty good. Red tails. I saw one that no one talked about, which was war hogs. And I thought that was awesome. I saw that a couple of days ago and I was like, this is, this is it. This is what we got to do. Um, but yeah, it sounds like no one really knows outside of, outside of Snyder's small little circle there. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've gotten warthogs in my email a couple times, and like every time someone says it, I'm like, I mean, it's like that that gif of I forget who was like sitting on the basketball bench where I'm like I'm like, mm. no, it's, <laughs> did, did you say warthogs? Warhogs, 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 Warhog, yeah, W A R. Either, yeah, either that's one, it. honestly. No, no like, I would be cool war, with either. But warhogs is 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 the one I was talking about, which I think is awesome. Yeah, and I think it like you know. Uh, so like I'm new here, right? I've been reading a lot about the history of this organization and like Russ Grimm and the hogs, like that being a, a key part of the franchise. Like, I think that'd be a really cool way to, yeah. like, you know, connect the past to the present, keep the color scheme, keep the, you know, cause a lot of people, like I did a story about how fans are processing this moment. And like, so many people are upset about like, Hey, you're changing the name. You're changing the history. Like the, the, I, I went to these games with my dad, like these are my memories or my mom. And like, if you can keep the past, uh, it seems like, look at Forbes, right? Like the team has a $3.4 billion valuation. Like even though the team has struggled so much for so long, it's still one of the more valuable professional fr sports franchises. And like, I think that has a lot to do with the branding of the team with the name and HTTR and, and the colors. And like, if you can keep some of that, if you're the team, I think that'd be smart. Yeah, absolutely. You don't, I mean, like, it's definitely you're transitioning from from one era to another but it's it, it'd be cool to to kind of keep some of those things like I, I i'd love to have an r name for for httr and or a two-syllable name that we can throw into the fight song right, right. or something but yeah well from a from a dysfunctional uh front office and a dysfunctional <laughs> locker room we go to the best locker room in baseball how was your time kyle and i were talking about it in the before we just we were kind of joking around how you've kind of had the you know the best of both worlds these last uh not many people can go from you know the highs of winning the world series against the big the big and bad astros to you know the last two weeks where your whole world's blown up how was how was covering the team last year because everybody loved the team 
Yeah, I think um, first I want to say just like as a reporter, like you can be bad, you can be good, just like be interesting, don't be mediocre. So, I mean, both of these stories have obviously been um, super interesting to follow and obviously in different ways. Like, uh, I mean, it's uh, covering the Nats, like just thinking back to that, like, you know, I think my most vivid memory of covering that team was being in Milwaukee in late May, like, like, you know, Carter Keboom had made like his third error and like Adam Eaton had dropped like a really routine fly ball in left field. And like, you go to the locker room after or the clubhouse, <laughs> see, I, I mean, it's already happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you go to the clubhouse and like Adam Eaton's the only one talking and like everyone else is just super pissed. And like, that was the day where I get like a, you know, I get a text and it's like, Oh, the Nats are signing Gerardo Parra. And to me, like everything after that was like, just an incredible improbable ride of like because uh my beat partner jesse and i like we went to school together and uh yeah in the baby shark like it was ju- it was just like a it's like a movie you know like none it of that was. stuff happens in real life it a was movie. <laughs> um what were you talking about jesse what is that jesse doherty yeah 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 uh so we went to college together so it was just like you know the fact that we'd end up on this beat together and you know it's just like every day we're, we're covering this team that's like, okay, like maybe they're not going to be terrible. Maybe they're not going to be middle of the pack. Okay. They are now like the best team in baseball. And like, I remember like us being out there for the Phillies double header in the middle of July, maybe. Okay. And like um, the first game Gerardo Parra debuts baby shark. And the second game, Max Scherzer goes seven innings uh, with like a black and blue the eye. eye. Oh. <laughs> like, like that stuff doesn't happen in real life. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. We had a friend who, um, because me, my brother, I know Ian, we, we're all big Nats fans and we were watching them from the beginning of the season. And, you know, we had, we had our uh, disheartening and, and we, we lost a little bit of confidence, but we were still watching them. And our friend Sam was like, all right, I'm, I'm not, I'm done watching them. Uh, yeah, unless Sam never pan out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never pan out. Yeah, he said, no, I'm done watching them until uh, unless they, they if they get to 500 at my birthday, I'll start watching them. And then and then they got there and, and it just <laughs> it just took off and he uh, he joined the bandwagon. And it, that was un, that was unbelievable. After that New York Mets sweep, uh, I put out like a Twitter poll and I was like, all right, who thinks they're getting back to like 500? Because I think they're obviously like 11 or 12 games below 1931. Who could forget? Uh and like 89 or 90 percent were like, nah, this team is done. Like sell wow. off, like trade Max Scherzer. And then all of a sudden, like everybody comes back in October, and they're like, I, I, I never left. And it's like, I where were you guys in May? <laughs> because yeah. Davey was on the hot seat. I mean, I, I gotta say, I was, I was ready to get rid of Davey. Dude, we, I mean, we wrote like a Davey is fired story, like ready to hit publish. We, we were like <laughs> expecting it, and uh, and Rizzo came in like that. Uh, I think they came home to play a series against the Marlins after they got swept by the Mets and we, you know, everybody's on high alert. Okay. Like what's the deal? What have we heard? And Rizzo came in and was like, you know, we're sticking with Davey and, and, uh, and obviously like that seems pretty smart now. Yeah. All about the confirmation bias. The, the rest is history, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh, is there one particular story or, or player that you, and that was, the best to be around during this entire run? I think, I think there's two probably. Um, and they both stand up from the postseason, obviously, because it was such a magical run. But like, I remember when they won the wild card game going into the clubhouse and finding Strasburg and just being like, how, like, what was your relief appearance? Like, like what was the key? And him just being like, dude, I had, I had no idea I was going to have to go into relief and, <laughs> until Eric Fetty told me. And I was like, wait, hold on. What? Like you're saying the key is Eric Fetty who like, you know, like Eric Fetty and I are almost the same age. Like he's the type of a guy who is like, you know, like he told me in spring training, like, Oh, like I'm super excited. My girlfriend's not down here. Like I can play like call of duty all day. Like, the Taco Bell for life yeah. kind of guy. Wasn't he roommates with like Bryce Harper or something or call it a uh, high school teammate. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so, and so like, you know, the Eric Fetty being the key to like Steven Strasburg's first ever relief <laughs> appearance and being dominant was, was just unbelievable. And it was like, of course that happened. And then um, the, the second story uh, that to me stood out was 
you know, they win game seven of the World Series. And uh, my job was basically like write about what they do afterward, like write about the celebration. And so that's, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good time. And like, uh, there was a lot that happened. I mean, um, I spent a lot of time on the field after the game because uh, everybody was you know, doing TV hits, like so many of them and, and the clubhouse, you know, it actually was kind of tired. Like the celebration after the game seven, it was less like, yo, we just won the world series. And it was more like, oh, we finally did it, you know? Yeah. Cause that's, and I think, yeah, that series was exhausting. Just having every away team win, win every game that like, that was, <laughs> that was mentally exhausting. Yeah. And getting through it with six pitchers, like, yeah. you know, that's right. It was tough. And, um, you know, I went to, I went to the four seasons where they had their, it was like the third floor in Houston of, of like the celebration. And, you know, I walk in and like, it's the families and, and the front office and, and everybody who, who kind of led to that moment. Um, and I think that really sticks with me because like, that's what a team looks like after they, you know, reach the pinnacle. Like they've been working for that moment their entire lives. And, and going to that party was like, you know, you woke up and the, and the dream was still real. And seeing everyone kind of relish that moment with their parents and like, you know, and family and, and the night that you waited for for so long is finally here. Like um, that sticks with me, even though it's just like, you know, like Max Scherzer eating like cold, uh, like a chicken enchilada or, or quesadilla or whatever. Like that's what was actually happening. But just the vibe in that room was, was unforgettable. Do a little walking around with his lightsaber. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, I mean, I, uh, totally random point here. I watched Jaws for the first time in my life a couple weeks ago, last week. And Doolittle looks exactly like um, what's his name, the the like marine biologist guy. Um, you guys talk about something, and I'm gonna look this up. Um, I don't think I've seen Jaws. Okay. I haven't seen it in a long time. Well, Come I on. would I I'd say that's embarrassing, Ian. But I literally watched it last week for the first time in my life. Come on, man, we're all we're all young here. We are, <laughs> we are all. Don't spring some old movie on us. It, yeah. It's Jaws, though. Uh, Matt Hooper, Matt Hooper. Everyone who's listening right now, go look at a picture of Matt Hooper from Jaws, and he looks like like Sean Doolittle. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there. I was pretty proud of myself for making that connection. Well. Um... Moving on from Jaws, we saw you work for the Chargers for the Athletic. We, we can kind of wrap up with the Chargers, and then we'll, we'll let you go. We know. It, it, it hasn't been that busy of a week, right? Um, <laughs> you yeah, the, let's talk about the Chargers. <laughs> I just wanted to ask him. I wanted to ask him because I was, I was kind of conf confused and intrigued. You're from New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Um, went to Syracuse, and you're writing for the Chargers two years ago? Yeah, I mean, I, so I interned at the Post after I graduated in May 2018, and like, you know, week nine of a 10-week internship, I don't have a job, and the Athletic hits me up, like, a, the, a, you know, the editor-in-chief calls, and he's like, hey, do you want to cover the NFL? And I was like, hey, yes, like, <laughs> like, I need a job, you know, like, the student loans are coming due for real, <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, okay, like, you know, here's a couple options, what do you think, and like, the Chargers was on there, so I picked them, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, I, I had a great time like going out there and, and covering another aggrieved fan base. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's how that came together. It was just, you know, a job. That's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. I just want to ask you one fact or fiction, then Kyle can ask you whatever he wants to about Jaws. Fact or fiction, Washington football team wins seven games this year. I'm going fiction. fact. God, oh! <laughs> God willing, if we have one, uh, a season. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a season, I, I think – like every time, if you read between the lines, like everyone asked Ron Rivera this year, like, how are you guys going to do? How are you guys going to do? And he always says, we're going to be competitive. It's a building year. And like, to me, like that says, like, they're not super confident about the number of games they can win. I think um, obviously like, you know, the, the pieces are coming together and like not signing Cam Newton or not signing, you know, Larry Warford, the guard that was available. Um, opting for younger guys and, and not even signing that many undrafted free agents. Like this team knows that it has a lot of like rotational pieces to sort through and find like, who's the, who's the base and them not making like a splash signing, like you saw in years past tells you that this team doesn't think they're one piece away. They're not going to overpay for Austin Hooper, for example. Okay. Um, so, so I think, I think under seven. Okay. Hey, well, that's what that's what Ovi said in the beginning of the year before they won the Stanley Cup. They said, we're not going to be sucked this year. And then they won the Stanley Cup. So you never know. 
but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And hopefully, and hopefully we have a season at all. So that, that would be nice. I just yeah, want to win. Think, sorry. I just want to win against Dallas on, thir- on Thanksgiving. That's all I want. Just one win. I think, uh, with, with as far apart as the NFL and the NFLPA are on, on protocols of testing and, and revenue sharing, uh, there's a lot of work to be done to get the season off on time, but, but I'm, I'm with you guys. Uh, I obviously hope that it works out. Well, that's, um, we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, biting our nails these next weeks. Then uh, it's all right. It's all right. Well, Sam, this has been awesome. Um, you go relax, turn off your phone, go on, a, go <laughs> no, on a, not doing that again. Go on another hike in May. <laughs> and um, thanks for being on Kyle. And I really appreciate it. I wish you a relaxing week next week. I, I, I hope you actually have a week without news. I don't want to say that because I don't know if that's bad, but yeah, take it easy. For sure. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. You. you have a good one.